So this story I'm going to tell you. Um, I've never really sat down and um, told told this story um, the way it happened. Um, a kid I went to school with um, since third grade had, uh, you know, I've known him my entire life. I come from a small town. Outside of Buffalo. And, uh, he had been selling my, uh, my girl from, who I love more than anything, Ecstasy. And, um, kind of like gave him a couple uh gave him a couple of like uh warnings like bro don't uh don't take me lightly you know what I mean like I already outweighed the dude by probably like I was probably like 15 pounds thinner than I am now um I was in pretty decent shape in high school and uh find out my girlfriend went to a rave got all messed up he sold her the stuff she didn't know that I had to talk with him because I never told her and um, I seen him in gym class I seen him in gym class and uh, we're alone in the locker room and like there's you know the lockers are here and there's a you know a hard like a you know a, a permanent like you know thing to sit down on you know a bench sorry um, and I said Todd what the fuck man you know like what is this I'm finding out he's like dude I know I know I said no man not I know I know and he like came over towards me and uh, not in a threatening way or anything, but I said, dude, I told you, the next time I'm putting my hands on you. So, the first thing I did was I ripped out one of his hoop, like he had, he had his ear stretched. I ripped that shit out and threw it on the ground. And he's like, dude, what the fuck? And I just went with one hand, woof, over the, um, the bench, into the lockers, boom, boom, like, you know, thinking that that would be, you know, like, man, I was like, damn, I right. You know, thinking that that would be enough. So, it wasn't. So, at the time, I remember telling my friends, I said, uh, we're going to set, we're going to set him up. And, uh, I know where he goes and we'll park. I'll come up, pull so-and-so out of the car, ba 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 uh, get in the car, sit down next to him, and talk to him. And, you know, and I said to them, if I lose my temper, and, you know, because I said I'm, I'm beating them up. Do you know what I said? But I said, if I get on top of him and I start, <coughs> you know, ground and pounding his ass. Oh, that wasn't even a word back then. It was so funny. Um, you know, I'm, 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 you know, you get out of the car. So my friends, unbeknownst to me, um, you know, start smoking a blunt while he pulls up, I get in the car and, uh, I pull my friend out that's in on it out of the car. And I said, Hey, what's going on? He's like, Oh, uh, 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 uh. I said, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. And I reached over and he had one of these old Chrysler cars where I forget how you locked the door, but if you locked it, it took a little bit of, you know, doing to get it unlocked. I said, I, you know, long story short, I told you, da 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 da. You know, he's look, he's sitting this way, so I grabbed his hair, bounced his head off the steering wheel, and I said, you know, I just remember saying to him, dude, I've known you my entire life. I hate that you make me do this shit to you, okay? But you're messing with, you know, you don't ever mess with a dude's girlfriend or cat. Right, little baby? You know? It won't ever happen again. I said, you're fucking damn right it won't, my friend. I said, uh, and I looked right at him. And, uh, you know, it's hard because it's a small car. So I 
kind of reached over and just just gave him a quick one right here which dazed him and um, I got out of the car I came around to the driver's side and uh, I pulled him out of the car and I really wasn't really he wasn't really like a person that you would it wouldn't look good you don't look like a man beating this nerd up you know and uh, he uh, I think I punched not even hard punches like you know boom 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 you know knocked him down picked him back up you know and I and I said next time you know and then um out of nowhere there was a flash and like what felt like a loud explosion inside my body, inside my head. And I felt like, damn, somebody came up behind me and shot me in the back of my head. What the fuck? And I just seen black and stars. And I felt like I couldn't open my eyes, you know? I couldn't open my eyes. I felt like my eyes were open. I started... I felt like I was leaving the earth, and I remember thinking, you know, like, God, I'm only 17. Like, I got a baby sister. Like, don't take me. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't take me yet, you know? And I just remember going, well, this is what it feels like going to heaven, I guess, you know? <clears throat> As I get further and further away, I now I start to feel like I'm leaving this realm and um, all of a sudden I just remember this like it almost sounded like somebody hit a tape deck and I was like Whoa. and I look legitimately I just remember that Whoa. and boom I was back and I just remember going oh my god and I just remember feeling the back of my head going man my head's okay and I remember looking at him, and in his hand, he had this huge-ass crowbar. And this isn't the one. I wish I still had it, you know. And he had a severely fractured, it's hard to see this way, but he severely fractured my skull. And I just remember looking at him, and I couldn't see out of one eye. And uh, I remember looking down, and... The, the pavement was wet from rain or snow, probably a little bit of both. And the green light was echoing off the stoplight. You know what I mean? Like it would go green and then it would cast a, a red. But when I looked at it, the green was red and the red was red. And I just remember going, looking at my shoes, going and tasting this mercury blood taste in my mouth. And I just remember going, why can't I see out of this eye? And I took my hand and I just looked and I said, I see just blood, blood everywhere, everywhere. And I remember I took a step forward and I heard a whoosh. I took another step forward, I heard a whoosh. The blood had gone all the way in and down my pants in this short amount of time it was in my in my socks and in my shoes. And uh I just remember looking at him and I go, you tried to kill me, motherfucker. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, listen, um, and I seen him and I said, you hit me with that. I said, man, you hit me with that shit and I've known you since third grade. I wasn't even beating you up. I said, well, guess what? I hit him. I just remember him leaving the ground going on top of his truck, kind of like an Incredible Hulk-like scene. And I remember looking, and I go, you only got one shoe on. You know, this wasn't making sense. I'm like, why would you have one shoe on? You know, like when I, he's laying on the car with his feet looking at me. He's laying on, you know, on the car with his feet looking at me, and him, like, for lack of a better word, like snoring, wheezing, like... <sighs> And I go, what is this mother? I'd never known because I never knocked anybody out. I was like 16. Um, and I remember looking down on the ground and going, I knocked him. I think I knocked him out of his shoe. 
Ooh, in my head, I'm going to knock him out. And I just remember the punch sounded like when you uh, you hear a baseball getting hit at the park on a wooden bat, that crack. And then I heard the this fall on the asphalt, like an aluminum bat falling. And I just remember the sickening sound that it made. And I just, you know, I've never hit anybody that hard in my life. But I remember looking at him and grabbing his one, um, his cuff link on his pair as his pant and pulling him right off the car and him just going boom, you know. And uh, I got down. And while I'm grabbing him, you know, I've got, you know, I've got him like by his shirt and I'm just like, bing, and he's squirming and squirming and squirming and I'm like, man, there's blood all over him. I'm like, man, I really fucked this dude up. And he's squirming. I said, stop moving, man. He goes, I can't, I can't. You're bleeding all in my eye and my mouth and my face. And I just was looking at him and I was like, oh, that's what the, oh yeah, that's right. That's from me. I hit him again. Well, he, rookie mistake, I should have secured this first. He had somehow found this on the ground and hit me again and busted my wrist. Like, boom, boom, you know, as much as he could. So I remember taking that out of his hand, you know, and putting it behind me. And right then and there, somebody came up from behind me and tried to, like, lift me up. And I remember grabbing them and was like wing and threw them off me you know and it was my friend um he's like dude get off him you're killing him you're killing him look at there's blood everywhere and i'm like dude did you not see what happened <laughs> it's my blood <laughs> it's my blood dude and uh, he's like, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. I said, dude, he hit me in the head. We're arguing. He's still trying to squirm. And I'm, you know, hitting him here and there. You know, and I'm still cognizant of don't hit him too hard because I know he's a bit of a diva. His family will sue you type shit, you know, even though he almost tried to kill me. So my friends pull me off. I literally put like a thing on my, like a glove. We, we were downtown Lockport. It's like... The movie set up Back to the Future, right? 10 o'clock, school night, February 3rd, something like that. He pulls up at the light. The snow's falling. Looks like Edward Scissorhands kind of type scenery. And uh, I said, Ron, what the fuck are you doing? Go through the light. Because I started losing consciousness. And I look down, and he's like, man, don't bleed all over my mom's car, man. And I'm looking down, and it looks like somebody had poured a gallon of real thick, like, Loganberry syrup and applesauce, and it was all froth, you know. And I said, yeah, no problem, man. I go, just get me to the fucking hospital. We get to the hospital. I walk in. This is stuck to my head, bleeding. The lady said, just fill out a form. I said, sweetie, I'm about five minutes away from passing out. I went into a room, laid down, and um, I woke up when the nurses came in. And uh, the police came. Um, I remember my dad came and, uh, you know, trying to please my father and um, for his uh, acceptance. He's like, man, look at you. Look at you. Because my dad was always like, look at you. You know, look at you this time. You gotta, you know, I said, yeah, but you should see this dude. I said, don't worry, he'll be coming in here pretty soon. Fifteen minutes later, you know, he ends up showing up. So, um, I stole $40 from him, and I never told anybody that. I never said that I robbed him. Three days later, two days later, the police are at my door, and I look out the door. I stayed home because I had a headache and staples in my head. They gave me a tetanus shot, which will come into play later. They never x-rayed my head until later on, and we found out that it was fractured, you know. 
Um, I said, Captain, what are you doing here? He's like, well, guess what? I said, I'm in trouble for not going to school. He's like, well, you're in more than that. Um, you got a felony warrant from your little incident over there on uh, Holly Street in uh, Ontario. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, your friend said that you robbed him and assaulted him, you know, with a, with a weapon. So he had gone, rule number one, secure the weapon. Rule number two, you need to go to the police first. You know what I mean? I didn't think he'd go to the police because he was a drug dealer. So, this is such a small town. The captain is like, listen, just go down and turn yourself in tomorrow. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he's here to take me to the jail, but he's like, I'm not fucking bringing him down here. I go to bring myself in. Felony this, felony that. My dad called a lawyer that he knew. They wanted to put me in jail for seven to ten years. I remember um, my lawyer was telling me, talking to the district attorney, he, he was a golfing buddy with the district attorney, and uh, the district attorney was like, yo, your friend belongs in Attica. He's a big dude. You know, sitting there robbing people at his size and picking on people. And my attorney's like, that's not how it happened. And it's not, you know. So, eventually, um, it got dropped. I had to do community service. I had a misdemeanor. But it was like, at that point, I just kind of realized that, you know, a, a verse came to me, no weapons shall prosper against you. And I just realized... You know, that no one's killing me unless God's allowing it. Even today, you know. So, when I tell people stories like this or whatever, listen, there's all kinds of people that are tough out there. I just look tough. They're single moms that you would look at at the store and go, yeah, she's cute. But they're tough. There's a couple different kinds of tough. I happen to be both. You know what I mean? I've never, and and uh, I always felt like God told me, don't ever use this for, you know, pride, prideful reasons. Use this, use your gift um, to, to stick up for people or to help people or whatever, you know. And um, like I said, I got in a couple knife fights. I broke up a fight with a guy that was getting knifed couple other stories like that that I don't really talk about but that's what happened and uh, you know he uh, you know hit me in the head with it kind of see that right there but, yeah I felt like somebody I felt like somebody uh, shot me. That's what I felt like. But that's when I really realized that I could throw a pretty bad punch. And, it, you know, it scared me, to be honest with you. It scared me.